having been at the altar with people night after night, including tonight, I'll be there again tonight, uh, I, I would say there's no question that there is a deep work of God happening in people's lives. What I would be looking for in something like this, considering our current cultural zeitgeists, I would be expecting if the gospel is being preached and sin is being clearly defined and repentance is going to be preached, we would be seeing repentance from the types of sins I mentioned before. When I see students, though, confessing sin and then joyfully praising God, what can I do but rejoice? Some of the concerns, I have to say, I feel as though they could be used to judge the Second Great Awakening as well. I think by now you should know that there's a major revival happening at Asbury University. People from all across the world have flown to Kentucky in order to witness that wonderful event. And major news networks such as the Daily Wire and Fox News have covered that story. We didn't fully understand what was happening at Asbury, and we don't really understand it now. We're not sure anyone does understand it. But whatever is going on seemed wonderful, it seemed like the sort of thing we badly need more of. So we started making plans to go to Kentucky on Friday, tomorrow, to see the service for ourselves. And then this morning, a remarkable thing happened. We got a call from Asbury University asking us not to come. It's not personal, they said. They like our show. But the ongoing service at Asbury is purely spiritual. It's got nothing to do with politics or business. No one there is making money from it or planning a run for office. It's mostly just young people worshiping God, young people finding meaning and answers in a country that increasingly doesn't offer much of either. It's not really a place for TV cameras. And we understood that. In fact, we deeply respected it. When you work in television, you run into a lot of people who want publicity. You almost never meet anyone who doesn't want publicity. And when you do meet people who don't want publicity, they're either doing something wrong or, in the rarest of all cases, they're doing something right something so right and so beautiful and so true that media coverage can't enhance it. It can only detract from it. We think that's what's happening at Asbury University. God bless them for turning us down. It was also interesting to see that the Asbury Revival or the university asked Tucker Carlson from Fox News not to come so that this would not distract them from what's happening there. As a matter of fact, the university has made it clear that this move of God or this revival is not about celebrity pastors or about exposure in the media. It's all about God and people fighting God and people fighting answers and comfort in God and worshiping God. I must note that as certain people or maybe most people are calling this a wonderful move of God, uh, something that is inspiring, something that is beautiful, there are people who are very skeptical about it. One of the key issues is that if this is actually a move of God, if this is actually a revival, then it needs to flow from the teaching of the Word of God. I think the, the one element that I was a bit concerned about as well is the psychological effect and the suggestibility of crowds. I think we, we have to consider those types of things when people are defining revival based on a response of wanting to stay, you know, a group wanting to stay and worship. And I think that's wonderful. I think it's great if kids want to sing and pray in their chapel. So I'm not criticizing that, but there we do need to consider the psychological aspect of uh, the the. And I'm not saying one person would be manipulating this, but just the suggestibility of what happens when people get together in crowds and that sort of thing. So I just had all of that in my heart and mind while I was there. Now on the flip side, I must say that this is just a university with young people singing and praising God. There's no pastor teacher there. There's no deacon. There's no spiritual overseer. There's nobody controlling what's happening there everybody's kind of going with the flow. So when you are in an uncontrolled environment and there's no teaching and preaching of the word of God, then you are bound to see some weird things happening. We are here at Asbury University, as we've been saying, where the spirit of God just touched so many people in this auditorium behind us. It is alive on this campus. We're in Kentucky. People have been worshiping here 24 seven for the last two weeks. It has been wonderful to see. We're here with Kirsten Williamson and Khalil Aki, am I saying that right? Akiki. Akiki, yeah. okay, yeah. beautiful name. Well, thank you all for being thank here. You. You're both students here. What year are you? Um, actually, I am not a student here, You're but not. I'm a uh, senior in high school. 
Amazing. Yes. Even better. Yep. So you live in the area and you just are coming by? Southern Ohio, about two and a half hours. What? Yep. Okay. Yep. So when did, when did you start? When was your first service? Two weeks ago or was it? Uh, so it started the 8th and I came on that Sunday. And oh yeah, yesterday gosh. was my sixth time coming here. That is great. So yep. what have you seen? So much. Um, we have seen limbs grow back. We have seen... I was limbs grow back? What do you mean? So... Ainsley Earhart asked this young lady who turns out high school senior, but she says, what have you seen? And she said, well, we've seen limbs grow back. <laughs> what? You've seen limbs grow back? And, and Ainsley rightly is struck by that. She said, what, limbs grow back? What, what do you mean? So I'm, I'm going to back up and play this again for you. Watch carefully. Listen to what she says in response. What have you seen? So much. Um, we have seen limbs grow back we have seen I was, limbs grow back what do you mean we have seen people just go up to people pray for them um even yesterday i saw a girl take off her boot she had a sprained ankle a guy came back in line prayed for her she threw it off started running and just weeping for what god had done for her and she said it didn't hurt anymore just incredible okay dear ones there's a huge difference between a limb growing back and someone running around with a sprained ankle. Uh, those kinds of healings, you know, the sprained ankles kind of stuff, you know, bursitis in your shoulder, those are all psychosomatic healings. Those happen all the time at charismatic conferences and events and crusades and all that. I, I wish I had a nickel for every time I have seen a psychosomatic healing, mind over body. Those happen constantly in charismatic crusades. Benny Hinn, I, I mean, if, if I did have a nickel, I'd be a very wealthy man right now. However, if I had a nickel for every time I've seen a genuine organic healing, a healing that cannot be explained by um, just mind over body or temporary rush of adrenaline, um, I'd be completely destitute and living under a bridge. Those healings do not happen at charismatic meetings, uh, Benny Hinn Crusades, those kind of things. Psychosomatic, yes, all the time. Organic, no. And, you know, I don't think this young lady was trying to deceive. Uh, I, I think she was just caught up in the emotion of the event, the emotionalism, exactly what Josh was speaking of. We cannot have a revival that is solely and simply fueled by emotions and experiences. Whether you agree with me or you don't agree with me, I think every Christian must have a high regard for the word of God based on the history of the great revivals that have happened in the past in this country that it all stemmed from the preaching of the word of God. So there cannot be true revival apart from the word of God. So moving forward, it is clear if this is actually a true revival, it will need to be grounded in the word of God because you cannot have a revival apart from God's word. You cannot have a revival apart from the teachings of Christ. It is important for the people at the Asbury Revival to ground this whole thing in the Word of God. Otherwise, people will, of course, feel something in the moment because there are thousands of people there worshiping and praying and, and crying out to God. And based on some of the eyewitness observations, they actually said that there is no teaching from the Word of God whatsoever. It's just people singing on and on and on in testimonies and there's no teaching of the Word of God. And that can be a little bit alarming. <laughs> But as soon as they leave that space, they have nothing to fall back on. But if they ground this whole thing in the word and teaching of the word of God, then there is hope that this whole thing can actually catch the entire country. I want it to be a true and authentic revival. I don't want to be a naysayer. I want this to be true and authentic. There are problematic things happening there. But in order for us to rectify these things, in order for us to rectify these issues, we need to get back to the word. Someone at some point needs to open the word of God and say, thus saith the Lord. We cannot do this without the word of God. We cannot fight this battle that we are facing in the 21st century, in this country, with all the gender ideology, the transsexual ideologies, we cannot fight this battle without the word of God. It is fine to cry out to God. It is fine to confess our sins to one another. It is fine to praise the Lord 24-7, if you will. But 
we need a time that we sit down and we listen to the Lord talking to us. And the way we do that is when someone opened the word of God and says, thus saith the Lord. As we consider this revival or revival so-called, um, you know, we, I think we all have to realize that the mess that we're in, in the American evangelical church, the mess that we're in as a society in America and in the West in general, um, we don't get out of this mess without revival. That's right. Yeah. It's just is, and so we can we can hem and haw, and we can complain all day long about how well. Don't you know there are charismatics involved? It, <laughs> it can't be a work of God if there's charismatics involved. Um, rather, our our prayers should be, Lord, make this real. Do your work in your people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it, it's interesting that I think so much so many Christians they hear of something going on off in the distance and they want to go and they want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something natural there, mm -hmm. but what, what the Christians should be seeking to do is, okay, well, how can we have revival here where mm -hmm. I am? How mm -hmm. can we have revival in my church? Mm -hmm. How can I have revival in my heart? You know, the spirit of God is here as much as the spirit of God is there in Kentucky. Spirit of God, work on me. Mm -hmm. you know, show me sins. Help me to repent of sins. Help me to, to rely upon you. Grant me increased faith and help me help my church, you know, yeah. revive my church. Help yeah. us all to, to pursue you um, with more zeal. All in all, I hope this movement spreads throughout the entire United States in that young people turn back to God, young people turn back to Christ, confess their sin and repent of them and give their life to Christ and Christ alone. This is it for this video and let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you're not a member of our channel, I invite you today to become a member by clicking the join button. If you'd like to support us on Patreon and help us spread the goodness of the gospel of Christ, well, subscribe to our Patreon for weekly devotional with Love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. I am